told you. It's a simple question. Who? As an interrogative pronoun, which demands the identification of a person or an entity, either within the discourse or someone or something else mentioned elsewhere. In other words, it's a question that requires an answer, and a specific answer. You know, there are certain questions that people can get away with just answering yes or no and not really giving you any details, but when you specify and you say who, it requires an answer. And not just a general answer, but a specific one. In other words, who was it that gave you this information? Who was it that conferred this information upon you? And it was a question that the Lord asked Adam. You see, Adam was in relationship with the Lord in the garden. He was there, and Adam was the man that God had made in his own image. He had given him dominion over every living thing that moved on the earth. He formed this Adam from the dust of the ground, and he took that which he had created and put it in the form, and this man became a living soul. Right. This was Adam who communed in the garden with the Lord. You see, the Lord had planted this garden and made every tree pleasant to sight for, that was good for food, and he gave it to Adam. See, the guys think they're doing something nice when they give you a couple flowers, but the Lord planted a whole garden for him to enjoy and to appreciate. See, there's no better lover like the Lord. We can all take a lesson from him. But he planted this garden, and in it, he put his Adam, his Adam that he made, his Adam that he loved. He put him in this garden where every pleasant tree, Adam didn't have to labor, he didn't have to work for the good things that came, but they came naturally. Why? Because he was there. And the Lord had placed him there. He put him there to dress it and to keep it. This was Adam who was instructed by God, who was provided for by God. As we heard this morning in our Sunday school lesson, Adam was there and was in sweet communion with the Lord. And Adam didn't have to verbalize his needs for the lost Lord saw that he had a need. And because he had a need and because he loved Adam, he provided the need. He supplied what it is that Adam needed, but it wasn't just any old thing, but he gave the best. He gave something that was suitable, that was a match. He gave something that was profitable for Adam. Why? Because Adam was dependent on God. He had placed Adam in the in the garden, and there was a, a symbiosis, if you will. They were living together, and having sweet communion, and it was a mutually beneficial relationship. Someone say relationship. It was a mutually beneficial relationship for Adam was completely dependent on God. Right. For if God had not said anything, then Adam did not know it. Right. And why do we know that? We know by his behavior. If Adam was there and as the Lord brought the animals to him, he named them. Why? Because they were in in relationship. They were in communication. Have you ever spent so much time with someone, they don't even have to say anything for you to know right. what they're thinking? Right. Why? Because you spend so much time with them, you get to know them. Why? Because you have a relationship with right. them. Right. A relationship that transcends words, where you get past that verbal communication. You're able to have a, a non-verbal communication where they can just give you a certain look. And you're like, ooh, I know what that That's means. Right. I better watch my step. Right. <laughs> you know, they could just, I know my mom, she was infamous for this. And, and I have to be careful what I say now. Now that both my mom and my brother have been here, people are telling them stories. I have to be careful what I say. <laughs> but my mom was infamous for giving those looks. And everyone in church, when we were sitting in church, she would just snap her finger and just give this look. And everybody sat up straight because everybody knew what that meant. She didn't have to say a word, but she just looked and she snapped her finger so she got your attention. She just gave you that look like if you don't sit up straight and pay attention, you're going to feel it when you get home. <laughs> but she gave the look and, and we knew what that look meant. Why? Because we knew her. Because right. we had a, a relationship. Because this relationship was mutually beneficial because I knew even though sometimes she would seem rough and tough and, and she seemed like she was so unfair and she was the meanest mom because she would never let me do anything or go to anyone's house and do the things I wanted. I knew that it was a mutually beneficial experience. And so when I heard that snap and I saw that look, I sat up straight and I better, you better believe I paid attention to what the preacher was saying. Amen. Because I had a relationship with her. And I was dependent on her because I knew, at least when I was younger, I knew that she knew more than I did. And I just used to look up to her with, with such, uh, such admiration. And especially when she was going through different situations, I would look to her with such admiration. I was dependent on her because I'm like, I want to know what you know. I, I want to learn this thing. I want to be like you. And so because I wanted to be like her, I would hang on her every word and I just listen to her and watch her. And, and whatever she said when I was younger, you know, as I got to be a teenager and whatever, maybe things weren't so, but I was younger and she told me to do something, I would do it. 
Why? Because I wanted to be like her. That's right. I wanted to be like her, and I wanted to, to enjoy this relationship because I knew that if I acted out of line, then there was wrath that would fall. Right. I knew that if I, I acted out of line or I did something that was contrary to what she said or what she wanted, there was a price to pay and it would put distance right. between That's us. Right. That's right. You know, sometimes she wouldn't even say anything. She would just give me the silent treatment. I hate that. That, that was worse than her, her yelling. Because, you know, I'm very non-confrontational. So I, don't, I can't stand yelling. But when she gave me the silent treatment, that was the worst. Because then I knew, man, I've, I've really messed up this time. I've really done something wrong. Why? Because that line of communication was shut down. Because I decided to do something that I wanted to do. But this is the kind of relationship that we see with Adam and the Lord in the garden where Adam was dependent on the Lord. He was completely dependent. All that he knew was what God had said. Why? Because there was an open line of communication between the two. There was an open communication. For if you don't have communication in a relationship, you don't have much of a relationship. Amen. If you don't have communication in a relationship, you then you don't have a relationship. Why? Because there must be an open line of communication. If my mother always has to call my brother to give me a message, then what kind of relationship do I have with her? If she can't pick up the phone and, and say such and such or, or give me a message, say, listen, you're behaving out of line. You need to snap up and shape up. Just because you're out of my house doesn't mean I can't talk to you anymore. Right. You know, she should be able to talk to me. Why? Because I say we have a relationship. Right. You know, after every time Pastor wants me to do something, if he has to call somebody else to tell me, then what does that say about the relationship? It says that there's a breakdown in the communication that yes. something somewhere along the lines is not right. Somewhere the communication that they had has been interrupted. You ever used to play that game telephone when you were younger? Yeah. You'd start with a message. But every time the message goes through another person, the message gets distorted and changed. So that by the time you get to the end, the message has no semblance as to what it started out with. It's completely different. Why? Because it's an example of broken communication. Right. The communication lines have been severed or unclear because they had to go through so many channels. When you see information, the more channels that it has to go through, the more vulnerable it becomes. The more vulnerable the information becomes. Why? Because the information has had to travel through so many different channels that you tend to lose things and separate things. And this is why that if you have someone in between your relationship, you have a problem. See, if you have two people who are supposed to be in this symbiotic relationship and you have someone in the middle dictating how one person should treat the other, you've got a problem. That's right. You know, I had a friend and I don't even know what happened or how the story goes, but I remember having this friend once and, and you know, we were good friends. We used to talk and hang out and then I noticed after a while we didn't talk or when I was coming, she'd always find some excuse to not hang out. And, and so I'm kind of like, well, what, what, what did I do to her? What happened? Right. So one day I said, what's going on? She's like, oh, well, somebody said that you said something about me and I didn't like it. She said, somebody said, someone said that you said something about me and I didn't appreciate it. And so I said, who said that? Who told you this? If, if you are my friend, then why are you believing somebody else's word over what I said? And if that's the case, why didn't you come to me and say, listen, Hey, I heard this. Is this true? You know, why don't you bring the situation to me and say, listen, what's the deal? I thought we were friends. But because she took someone else's information instead of coming to me, there was a breakdown in the communication where I didn't even have a chance to defend or do anything. But I said, you know, what kind of friends are we really if you can't even come and talk to me? If we can't even have an open communication, then what are we really friends? Can we really call this a, a relationship Amen. if you can't even come talk to me? You take someone else's word over what I said. Wow. You see, it starts off slowly. It, start, it doesn't happen all of a sudden. See, all of a sudden, they, you know, maybe you're supposed to hang out one day and they call and cancel. And then, you know, you go to the normal hangouts. But, you know, after school, we always used to have the uh, hangouts. But we'd always go to the library. It was the noisiest library ever. Why? Because everyone was always hanging out at the library because that was the spot. It was understood that after school, this is a spot where you come. You come, you hang out, you, 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 you talk, you have your snacks, and you hang out. This is, this is what we did. 
and then I know she stopped stop coming to hang out. I didn't see her at work. Or if we'd be there, she'd find some, some other place to be. She'd be like in another section of the library. And I'd be like, where, where is my friend? Yeah. What's going on? You know, what's happening? And, and you see the progression. Go ahead, go ahead. Why? Because she was acting on somebody else's information. She was acting on third party information. But the problem was that her be demeanor started to change. Her behavior started to change. The way she treated me changed. Nothing actually took place within our relationship. But I can't even remember what she said that I said that I said or that someone else said that he said this. He just, you know, you know how the story goes. So it wasn't as if we had a, a big falling out and something happened, but because she took information. Yes, third party. See, the problem with information is when we hear something, we meditate, we think about it, we then start to act on it. Right. That's right. why the Bible says, so man think is, so is he. For if you've already thought and you're thinking about it, then it becomes uh, it becomes real to you. You become, you believe it and you start to, 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 to build on the situation. You start to expand on it. Right. And this is what we see happening yes. with Adam. Right. Here he was in this symbiotic relationship where he had the spot where he and the Lord would come and fellowship and, right. and hang out, if you will, where they'd have sweet communion, where they'd be one with another church. I wonder if we could picture it this morning where the Lord and Adam and sweet communion being there every day, having this relationship where they're there and spending time with one another and, and being in the presence of the Lord. Adam was there without any separation, without anything. They were there in the symbiotic relationship. Right. But then something happened. Yes. From one day the Lord got to the hangout spot and Adam wasn't there. Right. One day the Lord showed up at the spot at the usual time, at the usual place, and Adam was nowhere to be found. Adam was not there. See, this was unusual activity. Right. Because up until now in the relationship, this was the meeting place. This was the place where they come together and fellowship and spend time together and, and just be. Build on this relationship. Every relationship needs work. Right. You have to work in a relationship. It, it takes intimacy. It takes time spent with one another, getting to know one another. Right. And so he missed their date, if you will. He missed their meeting time. Yes. He missed this opportunity that was so commonplace for him to come and to spend time with his lover. Right. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. And so you can imagine the Lord as he comes and he's saying, Adam, where are you? You know, th this is this is our meeting place. This is the time that we come to spend with one with one another, and you're not here. You're not here. Where are you? That's right. And Adam responded. He said, I heard thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. My God. He said, I heard you coming and I knew I was naked and so I knew I couldn't come before you in this state that I'm in. So I had to go and hide myself because I, I couldn't come before you like this. I couldn't present myself in this naked and deplorable state because, you know, you're God and you deserve better. And so I couldn't come to you like I am. So I had to go and I had to hide myself. I, I'm not worthy, Jesus. I, I'm not worthy. So I had to go and seclude myself away from your presence, away from you. Why? Because I'm not worthy to be presented. I'm not worthy to be in your presence. I, I, you deserve better. Jesus, I, I'm naked and I, I, I'm ashamed. So I had to hide myself. I had to seclude myself. I had to hide myself away because I'm in no position to be before you like I am. But I asked the question, what happened? For the whole time that Adam was before the Lord, he was naked. Right. He was who he was. Nothing had changed in his physical state. Nothing had changed in him. For he was still naked. The Bible tells us before that they were naked and not ashamed. Right. Being in the garden there. So what happened? What transpired that all of a sudden Adam's demeanor, Adam starts behaving differently and acting differently and, and carrying himself where he has to hide himself from his lover. My God. Why? Because Adam took third party information. See, before this, Adam had been dependent on God, and only the, the only thing that he knew was what God had said.